What's going on, everybody? Seeker B here from OnChain Media, Lore Cave Lair. And today, we're doing a market review for Disney's Loracon game. There's been a lot of talks about this with all the restock, all the hype. You have a lot of people that are taking the sense that this isn't going to be worth anything. Don't buy if you're an investor, only if you're a player, so forth and so forth. So me coming from a casual player, but also from the investment side, I'm going to talk a little bit and break it down right after this. As you can see, we're at tcgplayer.com, which is a great source for market analysis to kind of see what the market is for a lot of products. And we're going to dive into it because there is some good information here to kind of check out. So the one thing we're going to look at first, is we're going to look at the, the first chapter booster box, which like every product in the market from NFTs to new drops to anything people want right away. So you're always going to see it uptick and then swing right back down. So the reason why some of this has swung right back down is simply, well, it's more available for people. So the price is kind of steadied flow right now. As you can see, it's right now, it's currently at market price of 169 US with a little bit of an uptick. The end of the day, people are saying, oh, there's reprints. They're going to flood the market. They're going to do that at the beginning, of course, because they want people to play the game. They want people to buy the product. But what a lot of people don't understand is when you want to be an investor in these products, you're not going to want played cards. You're going to want pristine cards, gem mint, you know, 9.5, 9s, 10s. Those are going to bring the value. So that's what people want. So the more people that get in and play the game, yes, they're putting a lot of mark, uh, product out there, but it's going to make the ones that are not played in pristine condition a lot harder to find. So my opinion right now, this is a pretty good price for a booster box at 169. You could see this tick up a little bit, but I don't know how much more. And at the end of the day, if you're investing, here's the thing. People want fast, quick money. This game's been out less than six months. People think they're going to buy something and be able to flip it for tons of money right away. That's not the way it works unless you get in early which as you can see for first chapter box, you could have sold us right away about $400. But that's not the way it all goes. You can also keep these products sealed for a long time and you will see a return in your investment. People say they're printing. Well, guess what? Panini overprints so much product for football, basketball, baseball. A lot of people still collect it. Why? Because it is valuable at the end of the day. So that's just looking at the first chapter. Next, we're gonna look into Rise of the Floodborne. Notice anything, they're very similar charts. Hot when it came out, just on 375 for a box, trickle down now to about 117. Funny enough, it's harder to find Rise of the Floodborne right now, in my opinion, than the first chapter, but yet the first chapter that's been reprinted more is more valuable. A lot of people comment about this on social media and stuff. They're saying first chapter were done, but it's funny that right now it's actually worth more than Rise of the Floodborne box. And this is harder to find. <laughs> I don't know. Just the way the market goes sometimes. I think this is kind of bottomed out, in my opinion, around 117. Maybe it could go down about 110. But once again, Into the Inkland's going to come out. That's going to come out at a super high price, secondary market. Everyone wants it. People are going to pay a premium for it. So Rise of the Floodborne will do an uptick. Don't expect to flip this for money right now. But once again, your investor, hold your stuff. It might take a year, two years, but these things go up over time because they're going to stop producing it. They're going to work on the new sets that come out. So just remember that at the end of the day. And going into that, you had the Disney 100, which I can't believe this was selling for this high. 365 on the high. It's now settled around 66 there are talks of this whole Best Buy glitch. It's not a glitch, people. People just call Best Buy and talk to someone, give them the SKU, and they order it for them. It's not a glitch. It's If you're lucky, you can do it that way. And in my opinion, if you can get these for $60, grab them, keep them, hold them. Because at the end of the day, people like 
anniversary stuff. This is Disney 100 drop. Disney is very collectible, people. Even the Mickey cards in Lorcana are going to be valuable at some point because people love Mickey. Just remember that. People see this, it's like, oh my God, well, this is the FOMO right here. I need a FOMO. I need to get one. Paying six, seven X times because they want it right away, you know? And look at it now. It's at about $60. This could settle around $60 or so, but it's going to tick back up in value because Ravensburg is not going to produce these anymore. Once again, when people are wanting the new sets and the new product, they're in the business to make money. What is hot sells. Just remember that. So if you can grab something for $60, not financial advice, I would grab some. I personally have a few myself too. I'm holding them. Why not? I am doing a giveaway on the channel for another one of these because we just did one previously. So like, subscribe, join our Discord as well too. If you like sports memorabilia, we are adding lower content to the store and our store is free. The Discord link is in the description. Just come in there, collect your tokens and you can get some cool stuff just for free. You know, that's just how we do it in the lower cave layer and on chain breaks as well too. So now we're going to look at Into the Ink Lands. This trove is going to be coming out. You know, it's it's obviously declining. Well, that's because it's a pre-sale. A lot of people say don't buy pre-sale, don't buy pre-sale. But here's the thing. If you're an investor, it's not bad to buy pre-sale because it's at a set price. If you can get it at a good price, around, you know, $70, $80, you might be able to flip it for twice as much because if you look back at the Disney 100, people want this stuff and will pay a premium. So if you can get something like this for Into the Inklands, you can flip it, get your money back, make some money on it, you know, or just grip and rip or hold. At the end of the day, this is going to settle probably around, I think, around $75, $70 when it's all said and done. And the more products that come out, just remember, it's going to push the old stuff up, which we're currently already seeing with the first chapter box. It came out high. It's going to swing back up a little bit. It's already priced more. <laughs> then Rise of the Floodborn, right? So that's Into the Eight Glands. I think it's going to be a cool product. You know, the drop coming out, land. I do have some shorts out as well too that does show some of the sneak peeks, but we'll throw some up here as well too so you can see on screen. It's pretty cool. Now we're going to venture into the Enchanted Market. I remember I saw a Facebook post about people think that overpriced, everything's going to drop, Elsa is going to go down to like $150. Well, right now those people were wrong. Elsa, when it first came out, very collectible in the Disney market. Elsa, you know, she's up there with Mickey Mouse and other characters. Came out hot, seven, $800. Definitely dropped lowest to $354. And now it's on an uptick again of $455. Guess what? Any Enchanteds are going to be good ones to buy and to hold. It's just plain and simple. They're the rarest cards out there. If you can grab some, definitely grab some, hold on to it. Don't play with them, of course. In my opinion, as an investor, put them aside, hold them for long term, and you will see return on your profit. Charizard was not worth $10,000, $50,000 after three months. It just wasn't. Go look at it. Go look at the charts at the end of the day. Next, we're going to go into uh, Rapunzel, which is just another one that you have. You have the cold foil and then you have the, the non-foil, right? So so here's one to where, you know, the market. And just to show you, you have the market price and the cold foil price. Just to show you the difference. Not every card has this. But I mean, here you go. You have an uptick here. Highest 117. And it's now floating at around 62. And the non-foil, 61 sitting around 34. So really popular card. Can't go wrong with it. Once again, in my opinion, all these cards are a hold. They're all a hold because down the road, you're going to see an uptick. The charts show it. This is all FOMO here. This is all FOMO. Of course, it's going to swing down because reprints, look at the timeline. This is when reprints happened. Plain and simple. Now you have an uptick again. Could level out here. But I don't see it going too much lower. I see it going upwards down the road. So that's just a Rapunzel. And the last one we're going to look at today is the Beast Tragic Hero. I mean, this one just, 
I can't believe someone sold <laughs> sold one for eighty four dollars. It obviously spiked all the way down to thirty one, and you have a slowly uptick here. A little bit of a decline right here. Currently sitting at forty five and sixty for the foil. But once again, very very rare car to get. It's legendary, very popular character that people want to collect. It's also a popular card that people want to play with. So what happens is, is when people play with these, they're not as valuable as the ones that are kept in pristine condition. So just remember that people forget about that. People don't want played cards. They want tens, 9.5s, 9s, 8s, so forth and so forth. And those are cards that people have not played with. They're going to go get graded because they want the max value when it comes to a graded card. People aren't going to grade played, card, played cards. Just doesn't make sense. They're played, you're going to see the wear and tear. Even if they're in their sleeve, there's potential of getting damaged. So overall sentiment in the market right now is, as you can also see too, is a lot of the charts, they all have this top here, then they drop, and then they kind of go back up, and they have that little bit of a rebound. It happens in every market out there. I can show you crypto charts. I can show you stock charts. It's all the same. It all acts the same. This one, funny enough, <laughs> we talk about it doesn't, but you still have the fall off. And this is the fall off when the reprints pretty much happened as well too. Same with Elsa. Decline, decline, decline. Going to have an uptick. This one is more or less people just want it. And it, you're going to see different charts with Enchant as well too because they are harder to get. And because they're super, super short print, you, it, it's less people that are setting the price on these as well too. But once again, this is not going down to $200. Not a chance. No way. It's not happening, people. It ain't happening at all. If you have an Elsa, hold that. Congratulations. You're going to see it down the road how much more valuable this can be. So that is just the video for day today. A quick look at the market, how it's going, how it is. And if you're thinking about Into the Inklands, here's my opinion for you. If you're an investor, buy it. If you're a flipper, buy it as well too, because you're going to flip it for double, if not triple the price. If you're a game player, wait till it comes out and then buy it on the dip. As an example, first chapter comes out, hard to get 384, it dips down, it dips down. It's going to happen for Into the Ink Lands as well too. Every product they come out with, the gift set, the trove, booster box, it's all going to be at a high right away because that's how secondary market works. Then it's going to drop down. It's going to drop down. It's going to be affordable. If you can wait, just wait. If you're an investor, grab right in. I have some on pre-order because I'm playing the long-term game. I don't care about a $40, $50 swing. doesn't matter to me because I know that these are collectible items and they're going to hold their value and go up. It's going to happen, people. So that's it for today. This is Seeker B from the Lower Cave Layer slash on-chain breaks. I will be doing more market analysis down the road, but this is the first one. I'll be doing more cards, so forth and so forth. This is kind of fun video to get out there. A little bit different from my terrible gameplay on Pixelborn. But at the end of the day, just want to come, want to drop this knowledge to you. Settle your nerves. If you have any questions in the comments, throw them in there. Any, any concerns, whatnot, I'll get back to you. That's how I am. Join our Discord. Earn the token. Get some free stuff. Watch out for giveaways, because that's how we do. And I'm out. Peace.